If you would, you could turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> book of Ecclesiastes, and right there close to Proverbs, wrote by Solomon. And we want to read just a short lesson, a uh, message here, a, a short verse, uh, as as we uh, have studied the book of Ecclesiastes. There's some things that stands out in our on our mind, but uh, he he speaks of a time, and he says there's a time for all things. And we was we was thinking on this last even last Sunday before we. Uh, come to church about the love of Jesus Christ. And we know this morning that Jesus Christ, it's in Ecclesiastes, sorry, Ecclesiastes 3 and, uh, here it is, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. And it says in chapter 3 and verse 8, a time to love. And he also, he also added to this, there's a time to hate. And you know, as we read this, and as, as people that don't understand that, uh, and I say, well, that's contradicting one another. But listen, there's things in this world, and there's things that we need to love with all our heart. And then there is things that we don't need to love, and we need to hate them. And if you use this word hate and run some references on it, Jesus said, uh, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. And so, I mean, when he, when the writer here, uh, Ecclesiastes, wrote this, he had a, he, he was a very intelligent man. In fact, it had been this, uh, uh, God blessed him in such a way that he was, he was just great. And uh, some of his writings and some of his teachings, I don't understand real clear. But uh, this here, I understand this morning that there is a, there is a time to love. And there's a time to hate. And there's a time to love that which you do hate. Because, you know, I hate sin. I hate sin because it is against, it's against God. God is my Father. Jesus Christ is my Savior. And it's against that. But the thing of it is, I am to love that one or that thing that is causing that uh, hate to go on in their hearts. And so this morning, this is what we want to try to talk to you about. Uh, and and I, I was thinking about do we do we really do we really love Jesus as much as we ought to, or do we think about loving Jesus? Do we think about from day to day what Jesus Christ did for our uh, for us that we might have an opportunity and that we might have a uh, a love within us that we could be with Him. In heaven, and uh, sometimes you know I fail miserably. I fail miserably in even uh, putting Jesus Christ first in my life. And so many times I try, I try to uh, when He, uh, the Holy Spirit will tell me. I try to bless uh, and thank Him for what He has given me for the the food, the drink, the the health and the strength. And you know. Uh, what has brought me to be more thankful is that uh, my body is getting older, my body is getting weaker, and I know that all that's keeping me going and all that is making it possible for me to stand here and even teach this morning is the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God in my heart, and, and He is taking care of me and He is healing my body, thank the Lord, He is healing my body. And I'm, I'm thankful this morning that I can say that I, I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I try to serve Him. And so we, we wanted to bring some things to your mind this morning about the time, a time to love. And in John 3.16, very familiar, familiar uh, verses, uh, uh, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now, Jesus came to this earth as a as a man in the in the flesh, yet he was God in the flesh. He was he was because God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all 
in harmony. They are all one, but yet they are three separate. And, and Jesus came to this earth. And I, I was thinking about as, as maybe there was a conversation that was going on in eternity. I don't know. But they were talking about God is going, I'm going to make, I'm going to create a world. I'm going to create a people. And they are going to disobey me. They're not going to do what that I have given them the law to do. And, and this law that I'm going to give to them, even though they, they go through the motions of sacrifices and they, they try to keep the commandments, it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient for what I, for I want them to go. In other words, Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of the world. He came to die for all that God would call unto him. And, and, and this is, this is I, I understand this this morning that, that, that God made a way for every individual to be saved that he would call unto himself. He did that. And, and this morning, he, in his, in his own way, he used his son, Jesus Christ, as, as a deliverance. And this is the only, the only possible way. The, the Abraham and all those that, that were under the law, that, that are Moses and all of them were under the law. And listen, the law was a schoolmaster. The law could not save. And so that left the that left God's creation in limbo. He didn't he didn't want them to uh, he had already created a place for the devil and he didn't want them to go there. And so he he asked he he told or he, he requested of Jesus to come to this world and to live upon this world and to see what mankind was going through and to die on the cross of Calvary for mankind. And so this is this is the thought that I had concerning the love of Jesus Christ. Now think with me as you do often in the flesh. If your father came to you and you had everything in this world that you could possess, that you could enjoy, that you could do, and listen, he said, hey, I've got something I want you to do. I want you to go down there to these people down there that will not listen to you. I want you to go down there and, and, and testify of me, those that will smite you on the face, those that will spit in your face, those that will try to kill you, and those that will succeed in killing you. And do you, you, do you see the, the, the thing that was proposed to Jesus Christ and He and all of His glory and all of His uh, satisfaction? He was there with His Father, but He said yes. Because my love is so great because I love you, Father, and I will, I will go down there because, hey, they're going to be your people. And my love for them is great also. And I will go down there and I will do as you said. And we know this morning, and uh, if this may be old, old bread to you, but the thing of it is, Jesus Christ came to this world and he suffered many, many things on the cross of Calvary and during his life. And he gave his life that we could be with the Father in heaven. And this, this is the love, this is the love that, that John was talking about there, that, that, the, that the Father, uh, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But that's just the part of it, because listen, Jesus agreed to this. And so there, there is a, there, they were in harmony. They agreed together. And this morning, we so many times fail to understand what 
what the great part of our life in this world is about. We, we, we get, let the flesh uh, sometimes control us and we get our minds on worldly things. We get our mind on substances that we can hoard up, that we can enjoy, and things of this nature when, uh, and we leave, we leave Jesus out of the picture. And, and you know, the, the devil encourages that all he can because, listen, he has, he has strains on this flesh. And people this morning, you don't, you, 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 you've got to understand this morning that this flesh that I have and the flesh that you have, which is the same material, listen, it's going to die. And listen, it's not saved. And what you're carrying around this morning with this flesh is, is holy within. And so there is that warfare that Paul was talking about over there. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am. I want to I want do, I want to do what God wants me to do. And then I want to do what, the, I, 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 I have this battle with this flesh. And this flesh is just con, con, continually pulling against me. And he says, there's a constant warfare there. And it's just pulling, he says, and he says, I'm wretched. I'm miserable. And listen. That's the condition that we, we get we stay in most of the time because listen when I would when I, and Paul said when I would do good evil is always present you have you have the Holy Spirit you can you can be reading your word and and the Holy Spirit can be you can be fellowshipping with God and 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 that, and that flesh that it just aggravates that flesh to no end and the flesh wants to say well that's enough. Why don't we get up and go do something? Go in uh, and see what's in the refrigerator. Listen, that's that's the flesh for you, and and we have we have we have a, a, an ability to to uh, to overpower this flesh. But listen, I'll tell you what, it's a great task. And this morning, I I want I, I want I want you to see that that uh, uh, Jesus Jesus loved us enough that He come and died for us. And you, you see there, as, in, in one place there, when, when all the people were, were there and they, uh, uh, they, were, they were sad about Lazarus' death. Well, you notice there where he says uh, that Jesus wept. Well, listen, he, he weeps for us today. We, we get out in sin and we, we have to make an amends for that sin. We have to come to the Father and say, I'm, I'm sorry, I have sinned. And listen, sometimes, sometimes that, that, will, that will suffice for the Father. But sometimes, no, not yet. You, you wait just a little while and uh, you get your belly full of what you've done because, listen, you knew better than to do that. And this is this is the this is the thing that that goes on with 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 us all the time. And once once the Lord forgives you that, what a great relief it is. And listen, and we were talking about this this morning. And you know, sometimes we have to we have to do this in order to remember, because the devil the devil uses the same old tricks over and over. He puts a different face on them sometimes, but he'll use the same thing over. And, and all he does is he aggravates the flesh and gets the flesh all stirred up and causes us to sin. And so this is this is what I wanted. To, I want to, I want to get across to you this morning. We need we need to be more alert of what is going on in our lives and what we should put first and what we should put last. Because listen. This flesh, <clears throat> this flesh needs to be kept down. It needs to be in second place at all times because there's there's so many there's so many times that it gets the preeminence and it gets it gets its first the first uh, thing to do. So I want I want you to look at uh, in the book of Isaiah just a minute and it's a very familiar uh, scripture, but I want you to read it. It's in Isaiah 53, I believe. I got. If I find it right quick here. Isaiah 53. 
And here the, the writer says, Who has believed our report? To, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And this is just what we're talking about this morning. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and of acquaintance with grief, and we hid as it was our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now this is just what we've just got to try and teach this morning is that the world has rejected Jesus Christ. And it's more so now than it ever has been because the time is growing short uh, for Satan to get uh, as much in as he can and get as many uh, slaps against the Lord as he can. And listen, he is on the rampage. He is, he, is, he, is never, he is never asleep. He don't never stop to go to the refrigerator and get him a bite. Listen, he's always on the go. He's always on the job, and he's always constantly looking at your flesh, and he's listening with what your mouth says to someone else. And listen, he knows where everything is at and where everything is going on, and he is determined if he can't get your soul, he can get your influence. And he can get your influence, people. He can, he can, he can, he can put you down. He can get you to do, to do things or say things. And in the eyes of other people, listen, it won't sound good. And then the, the thing of it is, you turn around and try to talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, he brings that to their attention and says, "Yeah, but remember what he said a while ago about so and so." And so he's he's on a, he's on the warpath. And here. Uh, in verse 4 of this reading, he says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now notice here he says here, that he was smitten, he was stricken, he was smitten of God and afflicted. So we see this this morning that God permitted, God permitted the world to kill Jesus. Because listen, if you if you if you study your Bible and read much, you remember there at the cross there was that he could said I could he could call ten thousand leagues of angels down and could have took him away and carried him back home. But no, listen, he come there for that purpose. And had he have been weak enough in that flesh to have let those angels come and get him, then listen, we would have all been doomed. But he stayed there and he died on that cross for you and for me. And listen, we this morning, uh, we should be ashamed when we don't recognize Jesus Christ as our our Savior. We should be ashamed this morning when we don't put Him first in our life. We should be ashamed this morning when we sit down to a meal and, 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 and our, uh, even a cracker, even a dry biscuit and don't give Him credit for it. We should be ashamed because listen, that's a stinking flesh for you and it's no good. It's, 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 it's unsavable. And it's just going to, it's going to die and it's going to go to the ground and it's going to rot. And then God with all his mercy will regenerate that flesh and it'll be a glorified body. But now it's not, it's not glorified and, and people that say, oh, I haven't sinned in 20 years. Listen, they are mistaken because this flesh is, it's, it's just mind you're uncontrollable. And so this is this is some of the things we see that Jesus did for us when he <clears throat> when he was a, 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 a smitten of God and afflicted. And there on the cross when he allowed them to to do those things, but the thing that was, he was victorious. Jesus Christ was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He overcame them all that we could 
be with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And this morning, you know, if there's one, there's one of you this morning out there, and I don't know the hearts of anybody, but if there's one that's, that, that has not, uh, and I'm not going to say accepted Jesus Christ because that's not, that's not the proper thing. Listen, if there's one out here that the Lord has not spoken to, has not called, it ought to be your prayer every day, Lord, please speak to my heart. Please call me. Please uh, hear my prayer that I want to I be, be your servant and then I want to be your friend. Because that's, that's the thing this morning with uh, so many people out there that are saying, well, all you have to do is say the little prayer or uh, invite Christ in. Listen, people, it's, it's sick. It don't, it don't go back. It don't work that way. But you, this morning, we need to it, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us of our daily sins. But if there's one that's not not say we need, they need to ask the Lord to to speak to their hearts and to uh, call them unto Him because that's the only way. That's the only way. Uh, I mean, the Lord has got to call you. You can't you can't uh, you can't pray through as the old the old people used to say and. and uh, uh, and, and get it done. It's that's that's works. <laughs> that's self doing it. But here again, in verse seven, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is bought as a lamb to the slaughter. He's brought to the lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who desires shall des declare his, this, his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And notice here, even this, this morning. He was made, he, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make, make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure, <clears throat> and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my Righteous servant, justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Now, I want you to notice something here this morning, people. It says he will justify many. There's there's many going to be called. There's many that will be with the Father in heaven. But listen, it's it's sad to say, but they're not going to all be there. Uh, and people said, "Oh, Lord, God won't won't send nobody to hell," but. God don't send them. You send yourself. If uh, if you know, and, and 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 it's it's a terrible thing this morning. But you know, uh, we need to pray for one another, as, as it's already been mentioned. We pray that that the, that the Lord will 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 keep us together. That and first of all, as a, as a church, and then as an individual, that He will call them those that as not called in the church, that He'll call them and save them because. He says here, uh, he he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He's going to bear the iniquities of those that God has called. So this morning, <clears throat> this is this is part. Of, this is some of the things that I would bring out to you. I want you to if you can this morning in the book of Ezekiel. Can find it right easy. I want to. I want to. There's a. There's a. a, a, a in a, Ezekiel 22. <clears throat> and it's verse 30. Is that Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel, of the Lord, talking to Ezekiel here. In uh, Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. He says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, 
but I found none. Now, uh, I, I wanted to read this to you because, listen, there's a gap out here to fill. We have gaps in the church. We have gaps in the home. We have gaps to fill. And here, here the writer says, I sought for a man among them that should make, should make up the hedge. Now you remember in the book of Job, the word hedge is used, and Job went before God. And God said, have you tried my servant Job? He says, you put a hedge around me, and I can't get to him. Well, here we see this hedge mentioned again here, that, I, that this man should make up the hedge, should be a protector. And listen, thank the Lord this morning for those that are, that are making up the hedge. For the, our pastors and for uh, our, our workers in, in the church and for the uh, people that are trying to uh, do what they can for the Lord is trying to take part in the church. And I thank God for those. And he says here, and, and he says, I want them to uh, to stand in the gap. Now, what? Why? Why is the gap there? Well, listen. When uh, when he came to the Lord. When the devil came to God, he says, you put a hedge up there, and there wasn't no gap there. There wasn't nothing that he could get through. And so he says, I, I need someone to, to, to stand up for this hedge, and I need someone to stand in the gap. And so this morning, uh, our some of our responsibilities is this morning is to stand in the gap and to, to, to keep that, keep that, that hedge, if it's getting a gap in it, you stand in that gap and take the place of the hedge and protect who you can and what you can. And listen, you can do that this morning by uh, being a witness for other to other people. You can be a witness. You can you can uh, volunteer uh, your services more so in the church and uh, help the ones that are trying to labor in the church because. Some people, some people have different jobs in the church, and uh, sometimes they just get overloaded. And uh, there's, they're, they're, it's wonderful to be overloaded, but the thing of this, they might need a little encouragement. And you can stand in the gap, you might be able to tell some poor lost soul out here about the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be able to stand in the gap there and keep old Satan from getting through and getting to him and, and destroying him. So here he says, Notice in verse 31, he says, in verse, and in verse 30, but he said, but I found none. Therefore, in verse 31, he said, have I poured out my indignation uh, 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 upon, upon them, or, and, and he says, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed or repaid upon their heads, saith the Lord. So, here we see we see that that there's a there's there's help needed, and uh, we we sometimes we come to church and we say, well, you know, I, I I really enjoy coming to church. I can sit back and take it easy. Well, listen, there might be something that you could be doing. There might be something that you could have done before you come to church. You might have been able to pray a prayer for uh, the church. You might have been able to pray for one individual in there that that maybe has not been saved. But listen, we need someone to help fill up the gap and fill in the gap. And so, but he says here, so if they didn't, he, he didn't find none. And so he says, therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. And I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. So again, it's just something that goes along with the love of the love of Jesus Christ. He is the one that came and filled the gap for us. He's the one that that put the hedge up. He's the one that made it possible for <coughs> me and you to be able to live in a country where the, this word can be proclaimed. Where that this word can be taught, where that uh, we can sing songs of praise to the to the Lord Jesus Christ, where that we can worship Him in in in, in, in truth. And, but the thing of it is, the gap, people. I believe the gap maybe was like that, but now it's getting like this because 
we are getting we're getting less and less opportunities to witness and uh we're we're we're, we're having more things come come on the scene that are saying one day they'll come through that door and say okay if you don't accept this one or if you don't let this one come in or whatever we're going to close your church we're going to we're going to destroy your church because you're breaking the law so we see here that there's a terrible gap that's going on and and the love of the lord jesus christ uh he stood but the, for but for us but the thing of it is we need to help uh, do these things too and to uh just to to be more sure to, to be uh, sure that that we're doing our part this morning if, 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 if that's if that's that right but anyway this is some of the things that i've uh, jotted down and uh i uh I, I had some more stuff here. I just look and see if uh, uh, this one here for that uh, uh, John wrote there. It says, "Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his brother." And we know this morning that Jesus Christ did that, and that he he allowed them to pierce his side, that that blood would be shed. He shed it. And that blood was an atonement that covered up our sins. Or that God does not see our sins now when the blood is applied. He doesn't because, listen, God cannot stand. He, don't, he will not because He proved it when, he, when Jesus Christ was on the cross of Calvary and when He died there. And He said, My God, why has thou forsaken me? Because that he wasn't forsaking his son. But listen people, my sins and your sins was upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And God cannot look upon that sin. And so this morning, we need to, we need to love the Lord Jesus Christ and, and love God this morning and, and, and put them first in our life and uh, pray for one another. So this is our lesson this morning. We hope that uh, something has been said that will help you and for those that are out in the uh, world listening if there's someone out there i hope i hope that uh, they listen and they'll take a uh, concern and that they'll get a bible a king james version of the bible and uh, look at some of these scriptures that we have tried to uh, pr present to the church this morning and uh, study it thank you so much for your attention.